Zaku became easier and safer to use with the Whispers update and the companion rework and I want to share with you guys the new builds that I use with Zaku now. You can now build riskier without risk which is rare and I really have a deep love for Zaku. They are still one of the best Warframes to use for almost everything. Whether it's the infinite scaling grasp of Loke or the defense removal of gaze meaning no shields or armor for enemies or the mind control that Accuse gives you and vast and time pausing all of it so you can go infinitely as well as scale infinitely and having Zata's whisper the double dips double dip effect an interaction that I've shown off many times on this channel Zaku just has it all in terms of dominating the battlefield and today I bring you three more of the strongest builds that exist for Zaku now bear in mind there are obviously other builds some you might like more than the ones I show off here and even though each one of these builds could make level cap quite easy I will show show you how they dominate steel path you see I can say that because I have done so many level cap runs that I know factually what would work there and what would not I've done my time as they say if this video gets at least 1k likes I'll have a poll then you guys can request any of the builds I mentioned today for me to take to level cap friends I hope you are doing well and if you like this video and you want to see more please don't forget to like and subscribe Thank you so much. Now I do have another video covering Zaku's abilities and a build that still holds up and is all you need if you were going anything endurance but it's very min max so some people did not enjoy that. So today I'll show you three other builds that require almost nothing additionally from your side but do go and check out the video if you want one of the strongest builds for Zaku and a detailed explanation of how they function. Now first things first, Nourish is unnecessary on Zaku. It doesn't really make Zaku stronger, like at all. Just one little ability and it's one that most people don't use. And the payoff of running out of energy all the time during endurance was not worth it. Up until now I found a way to make it really super viable. But still in most cases it's a worse element than dispensary. I got so many people brainwashed by clickbait in my comment section saying stuff like nourish is stronger because nourish is better blah blah blah. And again, and spread viral only for them to come back and say uh how do you deal with energy drain conduits my answer dispensary completely counters it like completely counters it pro tip don't get brainwashed by clickbait try things out for yourself and make a decision on what works better for you remember even most people posting level cap stuff do level caps in groups and to be clear the challenge of level cap when you are in group is non-existent there is no challenge when doing it with friends it's more fun but it's no challenge so some builds just might not hold up when you try and do stuff solo and that is the whole reason why I torture myself and only do level cap solo every level cap on this channel is me doing it solo because if you are in a group why even post it as something good anyone can do that shit easily and I'm not saying you, the viewer at home, should challenge yourself. That's not what it's about. If I want to give you a build that really works, I have to test it out solo so that I know it works in every single situation. Moving on, I do have a build with Nourish now because with the Grimoire, Nourish is now very viable finally. Solo, I mean. Why solo? Well, like I mentioned, if your build is viable solo, it means 9 times out of 10, you will carry your teams. How are you ever going to learn to be strong when everyone carries your weight around. I mean, look at this, side by side. One is the Nourish build I'm going to show you in a minute and the other is the Dispensary build. They perform almost identically and will perform almost identically up until level cap, like I showed on my previous video. Tell me baby what's the 
good, right? And at level cap, guess what? They will still perform identically. And you know, if I can stand completely still and a level cap demolist dies, trust me, this is strong enough. Like there's no other conversation to really be had. It's only about what you like and what you prefer. So let's go over the new and improved dispensary build. Then let's go over the new and improved nourish build. And then finally, I want to bring you a build that one of my viewers suggested. And when I tried it, I was stunned at how good it actually was. So for the Archon shards, you need two casting speed shards. They are just great to have on Zaku. The other three I rate, you should either take extra strength or extra duration, but it's not needed because all the builds I run today can run Molt Augmented very easily. So you will reach the threshold of full strip with gaze, no issues. And they all do it as soon as you spawn in with the help of corrosive projection. So no, don't worry about these three slots too much if you don't have the Archon shards for them. I would just really suggest the casting speed. So so first things first, the dispensary build. It's still the exact same build I showed off last time except you swap out Intensify for Umbral Intensify and Continuity for Blind Rage. This gives you strength over and above what you need for Gaze Full Strip. And this is out of the gate, especially because you have Corrosive Projection, regardless of your Archon Shards. If you do have some strength Archon Shards lying around and if you don't really, Corrosive Projection will take care of the rest of the armor, um, you can comfortably replace Molt Augmented with Molt Efficiency because between one-shotting all enemies and them being knocked down by arcane eruption and you controlling their minds and you being invisible half the time with the Hura's Kubro, your shields probably ain't going anywhere. Oh yes, we are using the good old invisible doggo for stalk since our abilities do all the talking. This build is very destructive right out the gate. But if you are doing endurance, it still holds up perfectly. The trade-off from my previous build is that you have to cast more. But that's not a problem since you can be invisible and cast whatever you like. If you don't have the strength arc on shards like I do, not to worry, Corrosive Projection still makes this build strip 100% straight out the gate. But you can also just replace efficiency with Molt Augmented, like I said. And that's only if you really want the guarantee. And if you are running endurance, I'd still recommend my previous build to this one because of the extra duration you will get. Or you could replace Umbral Intensify with continuity and efficiency with Molt Augmented to make it ramp up quicker. Up to you. Now for the Nourish build, here it is and it's important to realize that Nourish will not buff the damage of Grasp of Loke. That's why I tend to not use it. It can be used with something like Combat Discipline or Vampiric Grasp to trigger the viral explosion that Nourish does, but it's really bad to do it this way because Nourish Explosion will give you only one stack of viral. You can replace the very useless combo of Vampiric Grasp and Combat Discipline with other mods. Then you have two brand new mod slots for power. Because at the rate that you spread viral this way, you are not getting 10 stacks of viral anytime soon. And also, have you heard of the epitaph? Does a better job, way easier. And if you are planning on running the tome for that sweet energy, have you ever heard of the Torrid? What? Oh wait, <laughs> combat discipline killed me, I forgot to take it off. Okay, there, better now. Where was I? The only use for Nourish on this build is to buff your weapons, not your abilities, and it does nothing for Grasp of Loke, just use a primer. Don't settle for weak when you can have strong. Now it has to be said uh, that you can mind control enemies to fight for you with a Qs, the ability that no one uses, and I really do mean this, I've never seen anybody except me use this ability, but it is excellent. But you know, also Zaku just kills anything steel path anyway, so most people wouldn't use it. 
but in endurance it is so good it's really really good so but if enemies are in this state you can buff them with nourish so that their weapons deal viral that's decent and yet no one else talks about how actually strong it is just blind meta people honestly i still wouldn't say it's the be all and end all because you basically one shot any enemy of any level when they are armor stripped or shield stripped oh did i not mention that gays also strip shields well it does yes it's very impressive so now that we know this what does nourish actually do for you it's great energy region if you use something like the grimoire or xenric it gives viral and extra damage to enemies you control and to your weapons so it's definitely a decent choice especially now that we have something like the tome but going all in with something like combat discipline and vampiric grasp to have extra one stack of viral on some surrounding enemies when you are one when you one shot them any Anyway, why though? I guess you could use Archon Intensify to at least get something back for all that effort. If you want the best version of this build that I've been talking about now with the whole combat discipline, vampiric grass, blah blah blah, check out my second best friend Kiai. Uh, Kiai. Kiai. Wait, no, he says Kai right there. His name's Kai. Check out Kai's video on the matter. He did a great job with that build even though he said my builds are weaker than his. Look man, if a build like mine allows you to stand still and a level cap demolist gets murdered by it. Level cap demolist, by the way, are the tankiest enemies in the game. It ain't weak. Also, I don't like the Nourish Combat Discipline meta because it kills any sort of creative builds. So I ain't covering it because anything that can heal, oh, use that build. That's, it's, it's mind numbing. So you do you and have fun. Fantastic. Okay, so for the final build, it's the Quiver build. And this one comes from Shell Nanigans, a commenter on my previous Zaku video. And they suggested that we subsume Quiver, replace Equilibrium with Constitution, and Intensify with Blind Rage. And Xenorix Inner Might, which allows you to free cast an ability, in this case, it will be vast on time every 60 seconds. And if you push the duration high enough with something like Archon Shards as well, the duration of vast on time will be just over 60 seconds. Again, you achieve this by having duration Archon Shards in the remaining three slots, Malt Efficiency, Prime Continuity, and Constitution. This will effectively make Vast on Times cost free and the uptime of your abilities near infinite for next to nothing. And the Helminth, as I mentioned, is Quiver. This is a brilliant build. This build, if I'm being honest, makes it so comfortable and relaxed that I sometimes even forget to cast Vast on Time because you're just invisible, everything's stripped, everything's done lying around you all the time it's it's brilliant if you not like me super adhd that'll forget to cast your abilities thanks again for that shell nanigans uh you gave me one of the builds that i like the most with zaku it's really cool also just a side note i do not have three duration shards on my zaku and my duration is only 46 seconds so like with most of my zaku builds i'll be running the grimoire with zata invocation for easy energy upkeep along with xenoric and it still makes this build build way more efficient than what you would think it would be. For something like level cap, I'd run Vazarin instead of Xenoric for the extra survivability because you can ha because you can use weapons in Quiver's field, so I'd be using the Grimoire for my infinite energy. But 99% of Warframe players do not do level cap, so stick with Xenoric for the insane ease of use. Nice, and there you go. Three more builds to add onto the list that are truly super easy to use and retain the power of the original. I hope you enjoy this. But in any case, that's about it. Stay safe out there and see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.